Hey, I'm Bennett, and you are watching a very special edition of Living My Alaska, a summary of the top moments of springtime in 2024. After a very long winter, life speeds up as we go van camping, we go wildlife spotting, we go hiking and we go fishing, and so much more. And we are so excited to show you what happens when Alaska awakens. Let's go. It is springtime here in South Central Alaska, and wow, I'm excited. It's been a long, very cold winter. I know we still have snow on the ground, and yes, we have four feet of snow in the backyard, but this is April, and that means melt is coming soon. We're prepping this van for springtime adventures. This thing rides really rough. It shakes back and forth when you hit bumps, throws things out of the cabinets. Rough ride means less fun. Oh, it's tight. That's what she said. So why is this important if we're just driving down a normal highway? We are in Alaska. If you want to drive down the highways of Arizona and Florida, you don't necessarily need all this fancy suspension upgrades. Our problem is we live in Alaska and we go down dirt roads a lot and even the paved roads are brutal. So we're upgrading the suspension to give us the smoothest ride possible over very unfavorable conditions. Keep your fingers crossed. Wow, that thing's heavy. We're gonna get this bolt in here. This is for the shackle and it looks like it's gonna thread through. Okay everyone, now that I'm thoroughly soaked and wet and cold, backside soaked and wet from crawling under this van I've set up a spare GoPro I have to record the suspension flex and activity as we go down the highway not much rocking I'm hitting potholes oh that's a good pothole oh more potholes let's hit them Ball. oh hey very good I felt that suspension flex no rocking. Yay, guys. I think we've done it. <laughs> I think we finally solved it. I think it's been... This is our new Starlink. A new Starlink Generation 3, Gen 3 Starlink, and this new fancy mount made by Trio Flat Mounts. So I want this to be placed right about here. And as you can hear, wow, that's strong. It's definitely not going anywhere. That's, that's strong in place. It's tight. We're going to try to make this as neat and as professional looking as possible. So I'm going to run it up through this hole that's in the rear view camera and into my Starlink that I've already mounted. And so this cable connects right in here. And that's it. All right, so that's the end result right there. You see, we've run the cable exactly in line with the gap between the two doors. So that cable's not being smashed by either one of those doors when it closes. Super excited about that. I think it looks great. Let's go inside. We're gonna power it up with this little switch right here. This is a game changer, folks. This is going to be an invaluable piece of equipment. We have online service that says, thanks to Starlink. Starlink on the roof, we've got it set up. We've got it powered up. And folks, it's running. We're watching YouTube as we speak. We're watching, of course, Living My Alaska, what other channel is there? I'm super excited about having this. This isn't gonna be great for you and your work. Absolutely. Yeah, it's gonna be good. We're prepping our sprinter van because we're going to the big city of Anchorage, Alaska. Road trips are always somewhat uncommon for us who live in the back country of Alaska. So when we get a chance to take the roads and explore this amazing state, we like to take the unexpected detours. On this trip, I'm super excited to share with you what we found. <laughs> We are going on a dog mushing tour with Susitna Sled Dog Adventures in Talkeetna, Alaska. Our friends Roan and Alyssa Boozer are professional dog mushers. They are like racing royalty in this area of Alaska because Roan is a second generation musher. They take us on a tour of the kennels, let us pet the dogs, we then connect the dogs to the winter ready sled and off we go into the wild frozen adventure. If you're ever in Talkeetna area and care to experience this for yourself, then reach out to Roan and Alyssa at Susitna Sled Sled Dog Adventures. I know they will be thrilled to take you on a tour. Now this is the first movie. I've never done anything like this. So we're learning as we go. I think the toughest part of this job is this part here, is to set up these boiler trays in the correct area. Wow. Guys, I am 
quite pleased with that. So the finishing pan as low down as possible and then the boiler pan I want to be a little higher up. Well, it's not beautiful, but I think it will do. I think we did okay. We can work with that. That's pretty good. My ears are ringing. <laughs> yeah, that looks really good. Let's give it a shot this way. So I'm doing my best to get it lined up as much in the middle as we can. All right, that kicked back and that hurt. And that's very dangerous. I don't know if that dug into me or not. Oh, it's gonna be sore. <laughs> Rookie mistakes. I know some of you out there that are professional metal workers and welders and the rest are probably really laughing at me. You're like, what is wrong with this idiot? Oh, that's exciting to get this in place. And folks, we only have one major step left. And that is putting in, putting in the feet. This project didn't come with instructions, guys. There's no instructions. Not that I would read them. You know I don't read instructions. You've seen my other videos. Oh, I'm ready to be done with this. Are you guys ready to be done with this? So now the moment of truth. We're finished with the construction of this barrel stove. Oh, that's a good sight. We see a lot of smoke there. That's really good. We're going to tap this tree a little above knee high. There we go. That's what we're after. I have some more really big, beautiful trees back here. I want to tap those as well. Tap, tap, tap it in. I've never heard that before. This is straight out of this tree. This is the beautiful raw birch sap that comes out of these trees. It just looks like water to you and I. And we're going to taste it right out of the tree. Tell you what it tastes like. Cheers. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic. I look forward to that every year. It's cold. Come check this out. Do you guys hear that? That's such a nice sound. It's awesome. So these are my birch pans. And this is the birch sap. And you can see it's already starting to make heat. Next step, chopping firewood. It feels good to swing an ax. <laughs> it feels good when that wood splits like you want it to as well. It's embarrassing when I swing it incorrectly and all you get to watch it and laugh at me. So you can see how hot this is getting. Look at this, how white it is. To quote Paris Hilton, that's hot. It's been a long day of sap boiling and chopping wood. This is what we have, I guess. This is about a four quart saucepan. This is the result of about eight hours of boiling and 10 gallons of raw sap out of the birch tree. So you can see it's getting very thick, even as, as it's hot, it's super dark and it smells amazing. This is what it looks like. And so my goal is to make enough to have several bottles of it like this to last me throughout the year. Okay, folks, here it is, the finished product. This will be my job about for the next 10 days, all day, every day, boiling outside. Okay, everyone, it is um, about 6.30 p.m day two of some very long days of sap boiling. So what you have here is new sap coming out of a tree and this is what it looks like after about eight hours of boiling it. So we are going to cook down what we made last night plus what we've made today to 220 degrees Fahrenheit and that should give us a little bit thicker finely finished syrup and I can't wait to share with you what it tastes like on a biscuit. Here's what we have you can see this is an aggressive rolling boil and we are right at 220 degrees Fahrenheit. It's time to take this off. Technically it says 219, but that's close enough. So we're going to put it in these jars and then we'll put lids. And in the process of cooling, the jars will seal. All right, there we go, folks. This is what we get from approximately 12 gallons of raw sap in 12 hours of cooking. We're going to pour a little bit of this nice hot birch syrup all over this biscuit and let's see how we did. Mm. Oh, that's perfect. So we're getting ready to dewinterize this van. That means taking it out of winter storage, putting it full of fluids, filling it full, full of water. This is our water fill station. And we have an outdoor shower that you can plug in a hose to. It goes right here, fills up our water tanks. I think it's a 30 gallon tank. That gives us enough water for many, many days. We're gonna put all this stuff in there. We're gonna lock it up 
and get ready to go. And so that's how we pack. Before every road trip, we do a safety check. I do a walk around the outside of the vehicle and I do a safety check in the vehicle to make sure we're good to go. We'll take you into the little town of Girdwood. I'll show you what it like, what it looks like. And I'm getting hungry. Big boy responsible thing to do would be to eat what I have in this van because I've just spent a bunch of money stocking it up. The more fun thing to do would definitely be to go into town. I can't decide. I was hoping we could cook outside tonight. We ain't doing that, folks. We are not doing that. It is raining. Welcome to Girdwood. I believe we found a camping spot for the night. It's relatively flat. This is my view for the evening. Not bad. We're at the back of a city park and I don't see any signs. I don't see there's gonna be a problem here. What I'd love to show you is how quickly this thing sets up for camping. And it basically it looks like this. You shut the engine off, you make sure the power is on, pull down all the shades, switch on the Starlink, and that's it. it. Gets cozy in here when you shut off some of these. There we go. This is how I like it. Underneath the cabinet, what's called mood lights, also known as pimp lights. So we're set up for dinner and a movie. Or in this case, dinner with living my Alaska. Even better. We're gonna be good boy tonight, and I'm not going to go to the restaurants without my wife. Stouffer's stuffed peppers. Instructions, as if we ever need to read those. One of the beautiful benefits of having such a nice RV is having something like a make or microwave. How long did it say? I don't remember. 10 minutes? It may not look like much, but it smells really good. Manger. And guys, I gotta tell you, so Stouffer's, first time I've ever eaten this, Stouffer's stuffed bell peppers are quite tasty. I'm definitely gonna buy that again. We're gonna watch some TV. Rough life. Good morning from Girdwood, Alaska. I'm in a good mood this morning, as you can tell, and there's a reason for that. I'm picking up my sweetheart at the airport. My wife is coming back after a three week work assignment in the remote village island town of Dutch Harbor, Alaska. This is the famous Beluga Point. Named that because Beluga whales like to swim right through here. And you see their big white backs come up and down, up and down out of this water. Oh, it's so pretty in here. Almost fell. All right, this is the uh, famous Turnigan Arm. That's about as far as I want to go because if I stand there, that wind is going to be kicking and it's cold. Okay, you guys, I'm back at the van. Oh, because there's a black bear right there. Can you see it? Oh, folks, that is a big, beautiful black bear crawling up those mountains. Okay, guys, we're headed to Anchorage. Going to make a few stops, pick up the wife, have some lunch. Let's go. We're getting to the Bellas in Anchorage, Alaska, guys. I can't wait to show you the inside of this place. The inside is absolutely beautiful. Cabela's in Anchorage. Here we go. Full size North American black bear. You can see my hand versus his palm. Hey, you guys, check this out. There's a bush plane coming in with floats on it. about guys just got a text from dawn she's on the ground the plane has landed we're gonna go pick her up super excited about to get a lot more fun around here you guys we got the boss lady back with us we're going to the uh, black bear campground and you can see the weather is pretty nasty dinner time in the camper van. I have my sweetheart back with me, so I'm super excited. I'm making her some dinner and tonight's delicious dish, uh, Stouffer's Salisbury steak <laughs> in the microwave. Okay, I'm not sure what else, that's a spork. You see it here, I think we have some real forks. Oh, there we go, demanding woman. Your fork is served. That's it. Teriyaki, cup of teriyaki bowl in the microwave. Uh, no, we're not gonna read the directions. We're just gonna guess it. Wonderful. How is it? It's actually really good. Oh, good. Either I mean, I'm it's... really hungry or it's just really good. Well, a little bit of both because I made it myself. Of course. All right, we've had some dinner. Dawn's going to get the beds ready to clean up in here. And I'm going to go for a walk outside and check out this view. Life is good tonight. I have my wife back. Oh, honey, it's terrible out there. Yuck. 
<laughs> Potter Marsh is an area just south of Anchorage, Alaska. They've got this beautiful parking area where we can go and walk on this boardwalk and see all the wildlife. Tough life, somebody's gotta live it. Wanna go see some little critters? is the real deal. This is the Steel MS-362. Okay, after two years of sitting, folks, here's the moment of truth. Does this thing start? I've pulled it four or five times to get it primed. She's ready to go. So this is the pile. Oh, all of the uh, wood that we just ran the chainsaw to cut up. Oh, that feels fantastic. The sharper blade on the end of this thing makes it so much easier to swing through this wood, and it's not as heavy. Fantastic. Good tools in Alaska make all the difference. Oh, I like this axe. What took me so long to get one of these? Brand new log splitter for my sweetheart. So that thing rips. It's gonna be our splitting block. Yeah. And we can split these into some great firewood. That's gonna be a good cutter. Cutting block. National Park and we are super excited. But we're making a short stop in the beautiful little town of Talkeetna. This is the Talkeetna Gear Shop. The historic and family owned, locally owned Talkeetna Gear Shop. This place is fantastic. If you ever come to Talkeetna or make it through Alaska and you want a place to find some really great gear at fantastic prices and support the local business owners, this is the place to come. We're ready to fight the mosquitoes. Talkeetna Gear Shop, folks. Come and visit sometime. And it's a very interesting place that my wife wants to stop called Wall Mike's up here. See if he's open. This is Walmart's redheaded stepchild. <laughs> what are you gonna do if you find something you terribly need? Are you taking it? it? Take it to Denali with yes, us? Yes, it's going to go to Denali. <laughs> all right, let's go. Come on. There's all sorts of great, I mean, there's a whole bunch in here. And this is actually an old wood-fired cook stove, which in itself is worth a fortune, especially in that country of Alaska. What did you ask me before we got out of the van? What are you What happens do? if we find a beautiful uh -huh. wood stove that so, we might need? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That is the mountain called Denali, the Alaska Range. You're looking at the, the Denali State Park, a little bit different from Denali National Park, which is on the other side of the mountain. And that's where we're headed, to the other side of the mountain. What do you think, honey? Stunning? Stunning. What do you say, honey? I think it's as good as it gets. Pretty damn this, is, this is how we live my Alaska, right here. Hi, so we are on Denali Highway. Had a nice breakfast and now Bennett is going to see if he can do some fishing. I'm not so sure. This creek is running pretty fast. I'm not sure what he can catch, if anything, but we'll see. No fish. 
too much water, it's moving too fast. Smelled me. <laughs> Welcome to the Denali Highway in Alaska, everyone. One of my favorite places to be. The Denali Highway is a stretch of gra mostly gravel road, mostly maintained in summer but not in winter, and widely known and respected as one of the most scenic roads in Alaska. Endless rivers, endless mountain views, untouched wild scenery as far as you can see as you make your way east from Cantwell to Paxson. When you get closer to the Paxson Inn, the pull-offs become uh, better managed, the parking areas become larger, and as you can see we now are on pavement once more. But the mountain views become more and more remarkable as we go. Hello Mr. Caribou. our campground for the evening. This is Riley Creek Campground in Denali National Park. There's a squirrel in this tree that's pretty upset with me. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. <laughs> okay, so the process of setting up camp for the evening. Dawn is putting our window insulators in the windows, and I have the honorable task of making dinner. Did we read the instructions? No. Nobody oh, needs to read the instructions. You know what to do. Little traffic jam inside Denali National Park. Usually what happens when people are pulled over like this, there's some sort of a wild animal in the bushes running around that people like to see. So down in this meadow, everyone, I don't know if I can, about where the tip of my finger is, there's a grizzly bear. Before we head out to the Savage River Campground, we're going to make a detour into the Denali National Park Visitor Center. <laughs> I love this. This is really beautiful. So this is where we are right now. And we're going to the Savage River Campground tonight and then Teklanika later this week. Dogs don't run out of gas. Yeah. Good morning from Denali National Park. Setting up camp. So glad you can join us on this hike on a beautiful May day, springtime day in Denali National Park with Living My Alaska. Well, we know what this is, right? This is a land survey marker from when they were 1923 General Land Office survey. This is when they were marking the boundaries of the park. <laughs> it's bouncy. <laughs> Just another day in the life of Living My Alaska. <laughs> Tonight we're making reindeer sausage jambalaya. What we have here folks is all of your vegetables. So it's time to dump your meat back in. So we dump all of the meat. Don't leave behind those juices. And we dump in our chicken. And turn the heat way down. And that's what it looks like once it's all stirred up. And so now it's time to add our last ingredient and that is long grain white rice. And that's what it looks like. And you turn your heat way down, turn that all mix it all together and what happens now is that white rice will suck up all the flavor 
and the juices from all of this delicious meat and seasoning and vegetables that we put in there and give that about 10 to 20 minutes to cook. A little bit of a taste test. As you can see, we're just boiling and frying the final creation. We're gonna let this cook for a while, but it's time to taste this. Make sure it's delicious. Mm. That reindeer sausage is a little bit spicy, a little bit greasy. Got the delicious chicken in there and all that rice. And as my old grandmother, my old Cajun grandmother used to stay in South Louisiana. Mm. Sauce bon. This is Denali National Park. Young Moose plays with one of the gates to the entrance of the park. The railroad track hauling the train through Denali National Park is a favorite for Moose. This big bull will be nearly 1,200 pounds with 60 to 70 inches of antlers by fall. It's peaceful this time of year. It's, it was mostly to the, we had the park to ourselves. We had plenty of time, plenty of space, not too many crowds. The you know, wildlife was starting to show up. The beavers have been hard at work. One wonders how long it took them, how many days, how many decades, how many years it took them to build those huge beaver dams. Porcupine minding his own business. He didn't care for much too much. He wanted us gone. Wild grizzly bear and her cub. A grizzly bear front paw track taken near the campground. Caribou were plentiful in the park. This is at Savage River Campground. Not quite springtime yet in many parts of Alaska. And the Alaskan Railroad. Throughout the day in the park, one can hear the Alaskan Railroad when it goes by. Hilltop is one of the final fuel stops for several hundred miles before you enter the Dalton Highway and everybody that I know of starts there. As you go north, trees become a thing of the past. The open rolling tundra, trees can't grow, there's not enough topsoil and the environment is too extreme in winter. That's how you know you're really in the far north and nearing the Arctic Circle when the trees disappear. We were thrilled to see this place. It's a fantastic campground, a wonderful place to stay for the night on your trip up. And one can really feel like you are off the beaten path when you're camping above the Arctic Circle. That's something not everyone can say they've done. McCarthy, Alaska is situated in central Alaska almost to the Wrangell St. Elias Mountain and the Wrangell Mountains. The famous single path bridge on the way to McCarthy it's a stunning view and a deep gorge and a very narrow one-lane bridge, so be careful when you're heading over. This was our campsite next to the river in McCarthy. That river comes off the glacier. And um, no, this is dry camping. There are no services here. There's no power. There's no water. A little bit of drone video having a look at the footbridge. Campground to the left, McCarthy to the right. And the Kennecott Mine in the far distance. And that is the glacier that's receded and left all of that sand. Inside the town of McCarthy, various points on the map tells you how far you are from other places in Alaska. The famous McCarthy metal sign. One can walk from the town of McCarthy to the mine, but it's quite a long walk. It's better to take the tour bus. They have a little uh, shuttle bus that will give you a very brief ride up to the mine and they drop you off here. This is a fantastic photo of the Kennecott mine. This mine has been out of operation for many, many decades. This is one of my favorite photos. This evokes images and feelings of a, of a bygone era, something out of a movie. We feel so very blessed that you all come along with us as we hunt, we harvest, we homestead, and we adventure our way through a wildlife in this great land. Now here's a video I think you'll really like. Join me there, let's go.